All he does is accuse me of infiltrating France. Vous êtes un espion! Hey guys, I'm here today at the mall with Miss Chartier, Janair, and Cosmo. Hey! I want to ask them a few questions about Cosmo because he's a very special dog. So my first question for you guys is how old is Cosmo? He's zero. He's zero years, Janaea, but he's 10 months old. He'll be turning one year, June 12th. What kind of dog is Cosmo? What kind of dog is he, Janaea? Black. He's a black dog, and he's an English lab. So what is Cosmo's job? Cosmo's job is currently he's a service dog in training. Oh, that's his training. So that means he's going to help guide Janaea in her life. He's going to help her at school to be more independent, and he's going to help her guide her in her feelings when she feels anxious. Cosmo is also a part of our family, and he's a family member for us, and he will be there to uh, give us comfort and 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 we give us comfort that Janaea is safe. So what kinds of things does Cosmo have to learn how to do? Well, Cosmo needs to learn to focus on the trainer and Janaea. No. So then when we go in public places, he's not sniffing or wanting to play with other people. He needs to learn to stay close. So when we go to the mall, we go up the escalators close together and he's looking at us. We can go shopping at stores, and he sits beside us while we pay for stuff. And he has to be learn how to be a good boy inside of any public space. And that's what he's learning right now. And then hopefully, as he gets older, he's going to learn Janaea, help Janaea if she gets kind of sad, to give her some comfort by cuddling with her and giving her some pressure or letting her play with his ears or touch him so she feels, Janaea, can you touch his ears? <laughs> ears, and you know what? He's staying calm and that's what he's learning, to stay calm. <laughs> so how long does Cosmo have to train for? Well, Cosmo has to train for a good two solid years and then he has to take a test and then he will pass it because he's a great dog and he's working really hard and then he'll become a fully serviced dog for our family. Thanks so much for hanging out with us today. We'll see you guys soon. Bye. Bye. Thanks for having us. Wow, that's so cool how Cosmo is doing so much training so that he can learn to help guide Janaea. You know, what are some times that we might need a guide? Maybe when we're going to a museum and we need a tour guide or maybe when we're going hiking and you need a mountain guide. Guides lead us to where we're supposed to go and keep us safe. Did you know that God is our guide? Today we're going to learn about how God guided the Israelites out of Egypt. Last week we learned that God sent 10 plagues to Egypt. Pharaoh finally let the Israelites go, but the Israelites didn't know where to go, so God guided them. During the day they were guided by a huge cloud. Well. Just pretend you just saw a cloud. And during the night, he led them with a huge pillar of fire. The Israelites would follow the cloud and the fire to know where to go. But where was God leading them? Let's visit my favorite YouTuber, Andrew, and find out more. What is up everybody? Welcome back to Andrew's vlog. So, for a while I've been thinking, you know, there's been a lot of different social media challenges out there. And uh, I figured it's time for a new one. So I'm excited to introduce to you the Red Sea Challenge. So I've been reading my Bible as, as one does and I came across the story of Moses. You see, God had been guiding the Israelites out of Egypt with cloud during the day and fire during the night. He guided them all the way to this place called the Red Sea and they camped there. Meanwhile, even though Pharaoh had said the Israelites could leave, I guess he changed his mind. 
I mean, fair enough. Sometimes, when I go through the drive-thru, I think I want a medium double-double. But then I decide that I want a large triple-triple. So, yeah, it happens to me too. Anyway, so Pharaoh changed his mind and decided he wanted to keep the Israelites as slaves. So he chased the Israelites with his whole army. The Israelites saw Pharaoh and his army coming, and they were terrified. But God told Moses to lift up his staff over the Red Sea. When Moses did this, God sent a strong east wind that literally parted the water, and the Israelites walked through on dry land. That's insane. How does somebody part an entire body of water? Then the Egyptians tried to follow the Israelites, but when they did, God made the water come back together and all the Egyptians drowned, while Moses and all the Israelites made it through to the other side. So I was reading this story, and I saw how God parted the water for the Israelites, and I thought, man, this would be such a cool challenge. So, as you can see, I got a tub of water here and some knickknacks. We're gonna try to park the water. Let's do this. Okay, so Moses had a staff that looked a lot like this stick. So uh, the other things didn't quite work, um, but I'm gonna try this. I, this, this should definitely work. <laughs> and then the, obviously I was just using the wrong tool for the, <laughs> yeah, okay, let's try this. What? Maybe I just didn't hit it hard enough. <laughs> yeah, Moses probably had used quite a bit of force, you know. What's wrong with this thing? Okay, well maybe maybe we just need a little bit uh, more wind. I'm sure it was very very windy uh, on that day. So let's let's just that's gotta be it. This has gotta work. This this has gotta work. I mean, look at it. It's gonna part any second now. Any second. <laughs> Trust me, guys. <laughs> I've tried everything else. It's gotta be it. Okay, guys. I got one more idea. I think it's gonna work. I know it's gonna work. You know, I think this challenge might just be impossible. Because Moses had God to help him part the sea. And it was only with God's help that he could do it. This challenge was a epic fail. Well, that's all I have for you guys today. If you like my content, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe. And you out. <sighs> wow, isn't it amazing how God guided and took care of the Israelites? He guided them all the way out of Egypt and through the Red Sea to the other side. You know, I think... Oh. Uh, I think somebody's calling me. Uh, hello? Uh, hello? Hey, Ms. Maris. It's me, Doc. Doc? Are you okay? Where are you? Well, I'm not exactly sure. Based on my conversations with the soldiers around here, I'd say I'm in northern France, circa 1917. What? How did you get there? It's my time machine. I don't know what happened, but the thing's on the fritz. After I got a hold of Jacques in France after he stole it, something went wrong and it brought us here. You mean Jacques is there too?
Bonjour, mademoiselle. Unfortunately, yes. All he does is accuse me of infiltrating France. Vous êtes un espion. I don't know what I'm going to do, Miss Amaris. I've been in some pretty tight situations in my life, but nothing like this. With a broken time machine, I don't know how I'm going to get back to the 21st century. Oh, Doc, I wish I could help you, but I know nothing about time machines. <sighs> yeah. It's okay. I just wish I could find somebody to help me, show me what to do. Well, there actually is. What? Who is it? Who else knows about time machines? I've kept my blueprints guarded very safely. Wait a second. Is it Honeybell? Um, well, I don't know if Honeybell knows anything about time machines, but I was actually talking about God. Oh. You see, we've been learning today about how God is our guide. He guided the Israelites out of Egypt and even guided them safely through the Red Sea. I see. And just like God guided the Israelites, God can guide us too if we let him. Hmm. Well, thanks for the advice, Miss Amaris. I think I'll, uh, I'll take that into consideration. Oh, sounds like the troops are on the move. I gotta get going before they realize I'm not one of them. I'm fine! I'm fine! Who's up there next year? Miss Amaris. Good luck, Doc. I hope we'll see you back on the set of Power Up Online soon. Wow. Doc sure has some crazy adventures. I hope he realizes that God will guide him and take care of him too. You see, God is the best guide we could hope to have because we can have absolute trust that he will lead us in the right way. But how exactly does God guide us? Let's go visit the small family to find out. my speed, but my agility that makes Spider-Man the ultimate superhero. Wait, Jordan, wait! He, Jordan, come back! I'm tired! Oh. 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 What, what's going on? Wow! Now I have the powers of invisibility too! You can't even see me! because there's no power left. And then we'll have to survive on our own because there's no electricity anywhere. And we'll, and we'll sharpen sticks to hunt animals. And we might even have to eat the neighbor's cat. It's awesome. Jordan Small, that is not what a blackout is. Stop scaring your sister. Julia, honey, it's okay. Everything's going to be all right. I don't want to eat the neighbor's cat. Eating any cats, Julia, honey. The power just shot off for a while, but it should be on again in an hour or two. Why don't we all go to the kitchen? I think I have some candles there. See, isn't this better, Julia? Yeah, I like having the candles, it makes me feel safer. You know, these candles remind me of a Bible verse. We can't watch it on TV because the power is out, but I can read it to you from my Bible. It goes something like this. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Psalm 119, 105. Uh, whose word is a lamp? God's word, the Bible. Just like these candles help us see where we need to go, God's Word helps us know where to go too. The Bible guides us and tells us what to do. Uh, what does it tell us to do? Lots of things. For example, the Bible tells us not to be afraid because God takes care of us. Psalm 55 verse 2 says, Cast your cares on the Lord, and he will sustain you. He will never let the righteous fall. 
The Bible gives us all sorts of wisdom and guidance. Hmm. Well, I don't feel so scared anymore. Hey, the lights are back on. Just another reminder that God is taking care of us. These last few weeks, we've learned a lot about Moses. We learned about how God saved him as a baby. Because he had a plan for him to deliver the Israelites from slavery. We learned that God had a plan for Moses' life, and he has a plan for our lives too. Then we learned about how God used 10 different plagues to deliver the Israelites from Egypt. God also delivers us from sin and death. When he died on the cross for us, he is our ultimate superhero. Today, we learned about how God is our guide. He guided the Israelites by a cloud during the day and a fire by night. Then, when Pharaoh's army came back to attack them, God led the Israelites safely through the Red Sea. And God will take care of us too, because he is faithful. You know, that reminds me of our memory verse. Let's try it together. Know, therefore, that the Lord your God is God. He is the faithful God. Deuteronomy 7, 9a. Let's do it one more time, but I'm gonna take away some words. Let's try it again. Therefore, that the your God is, he is faithful, Deuteronomy. Hopefully you are able to fill in the blanks on your own. Wow, you know, I had a great time learning about Moses with you guys. And I can't wait for next week when we start learning about, oh, looks like it's time for questions with Curly. everyone for joining us today. We'll see you next time on Power Up On The Go.